you don't reach that mirror town until it goes all the way down. Yeah, and then it just picks up fluctuations. You know those things don't work in humidity? you reveal yourself of what you are and why you brought me to this landing? Or who you are. Can you start to make these meters go harder and higher? What was that? That was the video. Yeah. Can you say your name on this voice recorder that Dom is holding right into the red light? Can you complete this rhyme for me? Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, So whoever is here, I'll tell you, they start to get some visualizations of some pictures. So whoever was here was like very athletic uh, to exercise a lot because I see like a trampoline being jumped on back and forth. So no, that's a symbol of just exercise. So the person was actually in shape. Whoever this person is is in shape. They're not out of shape right here. So I'll tell you right now, it is definitely a female. And I, I audibly heard, and I don't know if you guys are going to pick this up on your, your, uh, your things, it's like a marry me. So it seems like a woman that wanted to get married. Uh, something like that, that she wanted to get married. And there's like, I guess a problem with like marrying her. So whoever it was, they eventually, I guess, married her off because they see the ring, and then there's a plane. So they feel like she went away from here. She did not live here in particular. I'm picking up the triforce. We have another 24 minutes before 11. Okay. You want to move out of your dog? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's probably better if we just go to the next floor. Okay. Okay. Thank you. What's that? Did we, do, we did all the rooms up there, right? There were just those two rooms? There's two rooms. There's a floor. Maybe when we go back up, there's the servants' quarters. Okay. okay. Watch your step on here. Stay away from I'll get out of here. <laughs> we had, we had so, a lot of people. One there, one upstairs, one in the other room, and we're gone. Our two 
the one on the do the one on the fireplace in that that room. That would go up. Yeah. Three stairs plus. Do the one over here. You know what I really want to do? Because I think this is a good place to do it. Let's do you remember our ghost watch we used to do back in the day we haven't done in a while? The circle? Yes, we'll yes. Let's let's, let's do that. Do that. You just gave me the idea for sitting down there. Yes. That's no. a great idea. I and think we should all sit down. And be quiet for a little bit. Right, I'll just see what happens. Be quiet. We could ask questions if we want, but if everybody's seated, then we don't have to worry about any noise interruption. Like you could just put that on the middle, in the middle of the floor. Okay. Oh, I slept here one night. You used that brick. Right. <laughs> that worked pretty good. Right. Well, that, is a, that is a padded brick. Yeah. I slept on that all my life. All right. This is nice. All right. I mean, just so you know, we haven't done a ghost watch probably in about five or six years. I don't know why. We just stopped doing it. Anyway, what a ghost watch is, is basically we sit around in a circle, and if we basically stay Sorry. silent, we ask questions, and then we just wait to see if there's an answer. Um, Victor sometimes will uh, say some uh, inspiring words. Do you want to start? I want to extend an invitation, actually. The, the, uh, the energy that I put out is grandpa energy. And whenever I put out grandpa energy, which is all the time, uh, I get a lot of kids show up. And I had a sense of a child upstairs crying. And what I'd like to do is if there are any children in need of comfort right now, Grandpa Victor is here. And feel free to come to me whenever you're afraid. And you can tell me whatever is bothering you. We're all here in the hopes of communicating with anyone who may be here. If you could give us a name, your name. The voice is outside. Again, if you could give us your name, your age, how old are you? Can you tell us what year it is? Treadwell, can you tell us the name of the person that painted your portrait hanging on the wall? Can you tell us the name of the person that painted your wife's portrait? Are those the guys? What? Those are them, I think. you tell us if that tie was very uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. I'd also like to invite any of the people that work at the house, any of the servants. Can you tell us your first and last name and the years that you lived that you lived here and worked here? That's true. Mm -hmm. There have been many people who passed through here. Can you tell us the name of your favorite member of the family? Voice is outside. This is Treadwell. Can you tell us who now has possession of a sapphire diamond ring? Who has it now? 
Apple Doodles, was it? First experience I ever had here was I was laying on the floor with Anthony and um, and Dale, and uh, we had recorders up in the back bedroom and the front bedroom, and uh, we're just sitting here talking exactly what we're doing now, and we heard plump, 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 <laughs> plump, and I went out and walked down the hall and came into this room up here, and Tish was here, and I went, we have recorders up there, right? And he said, yeah, but don't we have recorders up there, and we got the recorders, the only bride. And you can hear whispers, but I don't know if that's us going, holy cow, did you hear that up there? Right. And, and, or something happening in, on the second floor, but definitely footsteps. First experience, aside from that. Same. So if there's anybody upstairs, you feel like walking around, and you're a little intimidated having all these people in your rooms, now's the time to do it. Yeah, see, that's a good point right there, what Dan just did, because we have to also understand when we ask questions, even just saying please, does mean we're asking questions that maybe they might feel uncomfortable answering, or that, you know, they might see us as rude. Well, the family that lived here, I don't mean to interrupt you, Don, but the family that lived here, the Treadwells, were, back in the day, they were, they were a family in good standing in the neighborhood. This was a very Tony neighborhood to be living in. And uh, and they were a wealthy, wealthy family. And so I know when people come in that are working here, say good morning to the Treadwells. And when we leave, if you were at the, if you were at Gracie Mansion, right. how would you act? Right. And, and so you try and try and be as polite as you can. But also I find that I get a lot of things, I catch a lot of things just happening during normal conversation. Remember, most of the stuff that happens here happens during the day-to-day -day operations. So it's when people are milling about and going about their daily business, that's when the stuff is happening. So, I mean, very rarely does this happen. Right. Um, well, I know, I know, and to me, I think that makes it harder. Yeah. You know, fun it, it works. makes it really... Fun works. Right. Because if you're sitting around going, can you give us a sign of your presence? Who would want to talk to somebody like that? Right. You'd rather talk, talk to somebody who's having a good right. time. Already having a conversation. Engaging. Well, that's what I said. We don't want to act like we're, we're bothering them. Yeah, they're we, not on trial. If we, we, if we invite to... them in to be part of our conversation or invite them in to be part of what, you know, what we're doing and make them feel like you know, we're family rather than we're these just strangers asking questions. I think that's the key to all of this. If you really want to communicate, you have to communicate on their level, not our level. And the thing is, is that, yes, I do believe that when someone dies, they gain knowledge over a course of time. They're probably not the person, the people they were when they first died. Maybe they have gained some more knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I think what you said was true, though. Maybe from the day to day, when they see that, that's what they want to be part of. They want to be part of life. Well, from from all the stuff, and I won't reveal anything, from all the, uh, I've had some pretty, uh, the mediums I've brought in here have been, have been vetted by Windbridge Institute, Forever Family Foundation, from Ryan, um, major players who have said these are the real deal, and, uh, and the information that they have gotten has been, they know exactly what we're doing when we do this. Right. Exactly. We've told them. They get a kick out of it. Um... They interact with us, and sometimes it doesn't work. Right. Um, but they're aware of what we're doing when we're doing stuff like this. They're happy with the house. They don't. They're not here all the time. Right. Um, they come and go. They like Christmas. They're here a lot during Christmas. Mm -hmm. they, they decorate the house beautifully right. for Christmas. Um, they love the events. They love the lectures. They love uh, Anthony singing. They love that stuff. Uh, the house. The people that work in the house. Um, Connie's here. The people that work in the house and and run the house, they love them. They're, they're, they love them, and they love. And this is coming from the words of the family and the and a 
especially the, uh, the servants. There's a big servant presence here. And also, we've also had people that are on the investigations have had answers from what they think might be family members that have passed over. There's no way to tell. Yeah. But uh, I've had a friend of mine goof on me mm-hmm. here while I was sitting right here. Garrett. We caught Lady Garrett cracking jokes. And, and he came through? Well, I'll tell the story. We had a, we had a psychic here who uh, was sort of on the fence on. It was her first time here. And, and uh, she said, Dan, have you lost a member of your family? And I hadn't. But my friend had just took his own life, one of my best pals, about three weeks earlier. And uh, she said, there's a guy following around, mm-hmm. laughing hysterically at what we're doing. So I knew exactly what, who she was getting at. So I wanted her right. to tell you everything. So, uh, so I said, no, I didn't have a member of my family. Because I didn't. And uh, she said he followed us all around, and he was laughing, laughing, laughing. And then she said he has a daughter named Elizabeth with, uh, with an S. And Garrett did. But I said no. Did I mean anything? I said no, no. To see if she would change her story. Right. And she's saying, he's saying good one, good one, mm-hmm. good one. So he, Garrett knew. And then uh, we did catch an EVP down here. That I don't think it sounds like Garrett, but Lloyd thinks it. And I've sent it out to the DHS, and their voice uh, doesn't match up with Garrett's voice. But it's his attitude. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's, that's what, I mean, the good point. You don't know, you never really know what you're going to pick up. And you don't know if you're going to pick up anything. And like you said, there's times where there's, it's active, and there's times that there's no activity at all. That's true, too, though. We know this. We know, all of us know from experience, sometimes spirits will be in a place for a period of time, and then they leave. They don't, we don't know where they go. And then, but they always seem to return. It's like a home base. There's always a home base, and this is their home base, right? But well, a couple of a couple of uh, mediums I've had in here all said they pass by, they, they pass through, because you can just be anywhere you want to be just by thinking of it. Right. And they pop in sometimes. Well, I, right? Don't you feel like that? But this was always a connection for them. So no matter what, like they sometimes yeah. they feel like they're drawn to it uh-huh. for that reason. Maybe there is a reason why they... Who knows? Can't. I mean, who knows if there's even... We, we, nobody's proved no. yet, so who knows that this could just be just wasting our time. Who knows? <laughs> but I don't think so. I hope not, certainly. I don't think we're wasting our time. I mean, you think... You said you've been doing this for nine years, right here, in the same place. You feel like the evidence that you've gotten in those nine years, you feel like you wasted your time? No, no, no. I don't think so. I, I, I'm just saying there's... I, nothing I have, and I have some pretty compelling things, I throw out more than I keep. And uh, because I think if somebody I didn't know brought me this, right. what would what I would think? You think of it? Right. And if I thought it was trash, I would th- I'd throw it out. And, and so I keep some pretty compelling things. And, and uh, But I was telling Don today, I went four years without catching anything here. Coming here religiously, coming here all the time, and nothing for four years. So, uh, no, I don't think. And we know, I mean, all of us here have been doing this for a very long time. And we know on many investigations, you sit through, you know, six, eight hours in a place and you pick up absolutely nothing and you, you go through hours and hours of recording and sometimes you just get that one thing. And it could take you, sometimes it does take years before you even get that one thing. I think that's what makes it, in my opinion, that makes it worth it. If, if you go out 10 times and 10 times you get absolutely nothing, and on the 11th time you get one thing. It makes the other 10 times worth it. The temperature just went down four degrees. Went from 83 to 79. Good. Yeah, that's pointed at the floor. Mm-hmm. Oh, it should be not. Oh, you're out. Yeah. There you go. So any of the Treadwells, any of the servants, we have a, uh, and I'm pointing at it, there's a little blue box on the, uh, the northwest windowsill. Northwest windowsill, yeah. Uh, if you can wave your hand over that little blue box or touch that box, uh, that little blue box will know that you're here. Um, God, it sounds like a script I've said that so many times. Uh, so just wave your hand over that little blue box. You have to be close to it, but if that little blue box squeals, we'll know that you're... Uh, 
feel that you're here and you're looking for this. Tell us who you are and why you're doing it. Is it to get our attention? Is it because just what you did and you were just replaying something that you did here? Uh, you worked here and you were just opening the door and you closed, but why, why in particular the doors is my question. Not a slam, it's a closing. Um, well, we were, we have a recording during an investigation of what sounds like, and everybody heard it, everybody jumped and scared the crap out of me. And, uh, and it sounds like a door slamming, but we were in a room where there were no doors that were open to slam. Um, and I think it might have been um, a person that was there. I think it was some PK from the person that was there. A specific person. Okay. For something that doesn't exist anymore, but existed back then when this place was different. This place has never been different. Meaning, like, the doors, it is, everything is exactly in the same place? 90% of it, yeah. I mean, there has been construction here to keep it the way it was. But there's just something weird about that door going back and forth. Do you know where? Uh, I know it's... It's not on the second floor. It's got to be above, because okay. that's where I'm getting it. Mm -hmm. But it's up there while we're down here. That's why I think it's funny. What's your real name? Voices out front. Now, I don't know if the, ch uh, the child up here had a, a tricycle, not a, you know, I just think it's a big wheel like a tricycle, but uh, some type of toy like that because I keep. Voices out front. I keep getting a movement back and forth between that room and that second hallway, but not into completely into the other room, which is kind of rare. It's not a full movement mm -hmm. from the two bedrooms, uh, but um, it seemed like a kid's playing up there. Mm -hmm. That's the vision I keep getting. Now, is there something specific you guys need to do at 11? Because you got four minutes. Different set of questions. Oh, okay. I wish we could just leave here. It doesn't have to be anywhere specific. I think we should throw out the three, four minutes of questions and just go with four minutes. I agree. Well, you know, we've, we've agreed to conduct this experiment, so we have to ask those questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many questions are we talking about? Whatever it is on that paper. Five, it's ten. Okay. I mean, what are they going to do? Take away our paranormal license? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> usually when you agree to do something, that's what it is. It's an agreement. An agreement? I, uh, I Promise. No, I decided. Oh, well, we I'll, I'll ask the questions. We can do it. No, I don't mind. Whatever you want. I don't mind asking. I keep my agreements. I, I have them here. Why is this night different from all other nights? <laughs> Well, there's, the second, you know, if there's 85 other groups asking the same questions, I would ask those questions. Okay. Yeah, but they're not doing it until 11, right? No. What time is it? It's almost 11. But I would pepper other questions in here, and 
maybe they're tired of hearing me talk, but uh, I would ask questions to the servants. I would try and get servants' names, countries where of origin. Those have been things that we've been that have yes. been popular. Um, well, that's why I think what we do is we try something different for the next part of this. I mean, we went through the list. Let's do something different. But if there's 85 other groups asking the same questions, and in the future, it, it, I can't. Especially when you're working with the media, write down questions. The mediums, you shouldn't have to ask them that questions out loud because ghosts don't have ears, so they can't hear. <laughs> um, so they, they pick you up psychically, so you can ask questions without saying them out loud. We say that so the recorders will pick us up and maybe we'll get an answer to a question. But uh, I've done a good success with Richard Scholler doing uh, silent EVP sessions, which is really cool. Wow. But everything has to be timed perfectly because when you do get an answer, which I have, um, what do you, mind? you have to know the time and, and you know, I'm recording. That would work great in, if we weren't live right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because then no, I'm saying in the future. Get, in the future, when you do people would in the future. people would just have silence for forever yeah. and have an hour. We'd be the worst paranormal team ever. Yeah, no, in the future. <laughs> it's a, a cool technique. Who is time stream? What? Who is time stream? Time stream. What's time stream? The questions are directed to time stream. I'm, I have no idea. That's my answer. Somebody walking by out front. What, any people asking questions? No, the next three questions have to do with the time stream. Oh. As if they need an answer. Well, that's the, uh, I believe that's the basis of the question. What time is The time stream itself is the energy. We're like two minutes away, right? Or a minute? Yeah. One to two minutes. you should talk to why because you should because you're part of this I have my questions I'm jet lagged mm -hmm. you're jet lagged I'm so jet lagged so I'm kind of in an in between state too no because sometimes it's true though if, if we're the only ones asking questions I believe that I think everybody should be asking a question I think right now, I think only men have asked questions. None of the women in this room have asked a question, Ooh. which I think is a, you probably, I if you're trying to get a better chance of reaching I get, anything. I got great responses from women asking questions. I think that's why after 11, after Victor reads those, I think that's what we should do. Yeah, who's Constantine here? Who is it? Who's Constantine? Uh, I'm Constance. You're Constance? Yeah. <laughs> they like her, is what I'm aware of. Well, I hang out a lot. <laughs> oh, you, oh you, you work here? Yeah. Oh, no wonder. I hang out oh, a lot. Makes, <laughs> that makes so much sense because I couldn't figure out why I just heard men. So they really do like you. So maybe some of the questions you could ask with us. Sure, yeah, gladly. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hi, thank you. Okay, so these are the uh, mandatory questions for hour two. Is the technician or anyone from time stream still able to communicate with us? I don't know what that means. What's the next question? Are any stations still operating on either side? How can we improve contact? That's a good question. Next question. Okay, now we're going to go around in our 
circle and each ask a question or questions if you have. You could ask more than one. Okay. Um, Marie, you begin because you haven't said anything. State your name and ask a question. Hi, I'm Marie. I'm half asleep because I just landed yesterday. And I'm wondering if you're here with us. And if you are, um, maybe you could do something that we haven't seen, that you haven't done before. Well, I know that a lot of events happen during your musical performances and various things taking place at the house. So I'm curious to know about my event that I host. How do you feel about our open mic nights? Are you with us during those times? I just want to ask, um, I just saw one, someone just travel right now and just got here now into this room. When you were traveling, where did you just come from and how'd you get here? We were just jiggling it outside. Any voices? this question to Mr. and Mrs. Treadwell. What do you think of the neighborhood as it exists today? to be here? Do you want to be somewhere else? Or do you like coming back here because it feels comfortable? This is a question for any members of the staff that work for the Treadwells. Can you tell us what, um, what was a Christmas meal? Can you tell us what a Christmas meal at the Treadwell House was? This is Dom again. I want to know if, if it is there a feeling you can express. It's, you know, we try to communicate with you, but I want to know more about if on the other side, are there feelings, are there emotions, and could you Show us how you feel right now. If you're happy, could you laugh? If you're sad, could you cry? I know you have a piano here. Um, who was the piano player? If um, you like to play the piano, can you play a couple of notes for us? That was Jesse Schiffman on the piano. Uh, does it, I'm freezing on my right side. Any chance of hitting Schneider? It's still at 77. It went from 
84, 85, down to 77, but stayed at, it's been at 77. Um, I'm Eliza, and I guess I'd like to ask if you resent all of these attempts to contact you and you'd rather just be left alone. You would like us to leave, and you could make a knock on the wall or poke one of us or make a sign that you want us to leave, we'll leave right now. Otherwise, we're here. That's a great question, Eliza. Thank you. Very simple. <laughs> and the activity that you just picked up on the K2 was because my cell phone was next to it and was causing a fluctuation of something that's been going through my cell phone for ten. Pam, what is that right by your foot? My phone? No, your foot. You have, no, there's something on the floor. It looks like a pin. Look, right there. Well, be careful. Look, right, See, right, under, right by your right soul. Here. Right by your foot, right here. Oh. Right there, right there. Oh, it's a wire. Question yeah, I'll ask, a, I'll ask a question while we're still here. Uh, this is uh, Matthew. Uh, I'd like to speak to the servants of the Treadwells, and I wonder if this is a happy place for you. People have been saying that on our live feed that they hear children. So there's a lot of stuff happening outside, but to, to be more specific. Now we're down to 76 degrees. Well, that's funny, though, because Dan had an EVP in the child. Was that from here? That the one that you sent me? Mm -hmm. That was from here, right? Mm -hmm. Dan has picked up an EVP of a child. Yeah, two. Two of them? Two children? Near the pole. Like seven near the pole. Wow. All right, I say we do something different. Good. Because I think this is just sitting in the same spot. Um, I would say, how much time do we have left? Like 40 minutes? Yeah. I would do uh, I would do 
some time in the uh, kitchen, mm -hmm. and I would do some time in the servants' quarters. Okay. I'd love to go. That's where we go. Right. Well, if you leave a little time, and I can play you some of the stuff that we've caught. I have it all on my phone. Some of the cool ones. Um, what type of equipment do you guys have? Just what's the this? What are we using right yeah. now? Well, we are using. I mean, we're using audio recorders, meter recorders. We're using EMF detectors and uh, tri-field meters, natural tri-field meters, temperature gauges, and we're using compasses because we feel like any type of shift in energy should affect the compass also. K2 meter, which is a simplified EMF meter. Right. And what is the box? Which box? The blue box, that's yeah. the natural tri-field. Okay. The natural is great because it doesn't pick up what the other uh, meters pick up. Yeah. It picks up like more subtle energy. Yeah, it, only, it only picks up DC currents, right. not AC, alternating currents or man-made currents. This picks up, um, that's why it's called the natural. It picks up DC, direct currents, which is what we give off, what a storm gives off. Um, and it doesn't measure, it measures the fluctuation. It doesn't measure the size of, it doesn't measure, measure the amount of EMF. It measures the fluctuation between zero, what it zeroes out at. Changes. Tom, did you start this session on EVPs? I've been doing EVPs the whole time. Do you, uh, do you guys do live uh, playback stuff? Or the not really. You don't have to hear it on here. Is it Hi guys, we're going to switch phones again, so I am going to turn the speed off and we will be right back.